Uh, my report dealt with the vulnerabilities and hazards of stored spent fuel in, at uh, U.S. reactors in the United States. Uh, the United States uh, shares uh, similar designs, uh, reactor designs, as, uh, as the Japanese reactors at the Fukushima Daiichi Station. Uh, and if you watch the accident unfold at, at the Daiichi Station, uh, the explosions basically showed you that the spent fuel pools uh, were exposed to the open sky. Uh, we are, in the United States are currently storing on the order of three to four, five times more radioactivity in our pools than in uh, Japan, and that the amount of radioactivity that we are storing in unsafe, vulnerable pools constitutes the largest concentrations of radioactivity on the planet. Uh, in 2008, my colleagues and I uh, issued a, a report, an in-depth study, uh, following the 9-11 attacks. We became very concerned about the vulnerability of these pools after those attacks, and we pointed out that if somebody or something were to cause the pool water to drain, uh, it would lead to a catastrophic radiological fire that could render an area uninhabitable far greater than that created by Chernobyl. Chernobyl created an area that's currently uh, uninhabitable uh, uh, that's approximately the size of half of the state of New Jersey. Uh, the fact of the matter is, is that uh, we, we don't have a final resting place for these wastes. We've been trying to find a disposal site for these wastes for the last 55 years. And the reality is that these wastes are going to continue to accumulate at U.S. sites, and the reactor operators are going to continue to squeeze uh, uh, spent fuel into pools that have no, nowhere near the level of protection of reactors. I mean, these pools are contained in structures that you would find at car dealerships or big box stores. And, um, for example, the Nuclear Regulatory Commission does not require the pools to have backup diesel generators if they lose off-site power. Uh, it's very important to keep the, the pools cool, uh, and uh, they, they do pose some very, very serious risks. They are, in my opinion, the most serious vulnerability of nuclear power that we have in the United States. And but what are the alternatives, uh, given the fact, obviously, that, that the United States government, like uh, uh, several other governments around the world, are determined to continue uh, to expand the use of nuclear power? What are the alternatives for storing the spent fuel? Well, I, I think that the, there are different, there's a big difference between plans and reality. I think that the expansion of nuclear power in this country, if it occurs at all, is going to be rather modest and minor. We have to be concerned about the 104 reactors that are operating uh, and the, the generation of that material, and that we should be doing what Germany did 25 years ago, which is to thin out the pools, use them for the original purpose they were intended, which is to uh, allow the spent fuel to cool off for several years, and then to place the, the spent fuel into dry, hardened storage modules, uh, and uh, this significantly reduces the hazards uh, of these spent fuel pools. You say that what is recommended for expansion in the United States is relatively minor, Bob Alvarez, um, but I think many were shocked that uh, President Obama has been pushing for something that presidents haven't pushed for for decades. I mean, the last nuclear power plant in this country built, what, some 30, 40 years ago. I mean, one, you've written about uh, President Obama before he was president getting a good deal of support from the nuclear industry, and he never said he wasn't going to push for this, but they've been rather quiet about it right now since the catastrophe in Japan? Well, I think a lot of this is rhetorical. Uh, I think that uh, I, I look at it as the equivalent of throwing nuclear candy at political supporters or, uh, or, or even political enemies who you're trying to win over. Uh, the fact of the matter is, is that nuclear power is not going to have a chance in this country. 
at all unless it has unfettered access to the United States Treasury. Uh, this is not going to happen. Uh, the House, for example, recently enacted the appropriations legislation for fiscal year 2012 and totally spurned Obama's request to expand loan guarantee authority. In other words, the U.S. government would guarantee the loans, but the loans themselves would come out of the U.S. Treasury. Uh, I don't think that the Congress right now has the stomach to uh, open up the Treasury for reactors that are going to cost on the order of $10 billion apiece. You also have to keep in mind that while he has been vocally supportive of nuclear power and has done things like try to seek expanded loan guarantee authority, he's also pulled the rug out from under the nuclear industry by canceling the Yucca Mountain disposal site. Uh, and so um, I think that we have to sort out uh, as we do with a lot of things the president does, uh, the, the difference between what he says and what happens. Nuclear power globally, the U.S. says it's moving forward. But Germany, uh, uh, Angela Merkel has been forced to turn back on that, and they say they're not going to move forward with nuclear power plants. Same with Switzerland. Saudi Arabia says they're going to build 30 new nuclear power plants. Well, as I said, Plans and statements and announcements oftentimes are different from what actually happens. Uh, the fact of the matter in the United States is that we no longer have any companies or capabilities or infrastructure to build nuclear reactors. We have to depend on nations such as Japan and France to do that. Uh, for Japan is the uh, right now uh, the only producer of, uh, of forgings for reactor vessels. Uh, nuclear engineers in this country are almost like uh, Confederate war veterans. There are very few uh, actual U.S. Uh, citizens who go to college to become nuclear engineers because it's considered a dead-end occupation. So uh, we don't really have the infrastructure, uh, the skilled knowledge base that we need to have a, uh, any significant expansion of nuclear power is not there. Uh, and I think that the Fukushima accident has really had uh, a major body blow to the world nuclear industry. You have to understand that Japan, with its 54 reactors, represents the third largest uh, number of reactors of, any, uh, of a country in the world. They're number three. And for, for the Japan now to announce that it's going to shut down its reactors it, by, by next spring, albeit perhaps for temporary reasons, is a major signal uh, to other countries who are either, either have a large reactor fleet uh, or those who are contemplating building more. I think Saudi Arabia's desire to have 30 reactors uh, uh, is uh, something that's not necessarily going to be easily achievable. Uh, because of uh, the fact that the United States and other, uh, serves essentially as a gatekeeper for any such deal of that nature. Uh, I think that Saudi Arabia is looking to establish a nuclear infrastructure in order to allow it to have the capability down the road to have nuclear weapons. Uh, building 30 reactors in Saudi Arabia in a country which really doesn't have much water to speak of, and reactors are extremely uh, uh, water intensive, uh, doesn't make a lot of sense. Uh, and then if you look at the price tag for building these reactors in a place like Saudi Arabia, uh, you're looking at an expenditure of somewhere between three to five trillion dollars to do this. So um, I think some of this some of these announcements and plans are just what they are, announcements and plans. Uh, and finally, on Vermont, because it could become the first legislature in the country to shut down a nuclear power plant, the Vermont Yankee plant, but Entergy, the owner, is fighting hard, trying to sue them to stop them from doing this. Uh, the comparison of Vermont Yankee to the Fukushima plant. Well, the Vermont Yankee is, it, plant is a jo General Electric boiling water Mark I reactor, which is the exact same design 
as those at the Fukushima Daiichi site. Uh, it, has, uh, uh, it has more radioactivity in its spent fuel than all of the spent fuel rods at the four troubled reactors, wrecked reactors, uh, at Fukushima. Uh, it's uh, 42 years old. Um, and this is a reactor which uh, I think uh, whose time has come to close. Uh, it's, uh, it should not be looked upon as just a, a, uh, an ATM machine uh, for a multi-tiered holding company that uh, makes sure that, that uh, uh, it can make as much money as possible. You know, this reactor was purchased uh, for pennies on the dollar. Uh, and uh, companies like Entergy, who operate in these deregulated environments, are loath to do things that would require significant safety upgrades. For example, if the state required them to build cooling towers uh, and comply with the Clean Air Act and to really build new, modern ones, I think the capital expenses alone would drive Entergy to shut down that reactor. Uh, so. Um, I think that, that the battle lines are drawn there, uh, and I think that we're, we're going to see an increasing uh, uh, battle between states uh, who appear to be on a collision course with the federal government over the future of nuclear power. We want to thank you very much for being with us, Robert Alvarez, former senior policy advisor to U.S. Secretary of Energy, now a senior scholar at the Institute for Policy Studies. His new report is called Spent Nuclear Fuel Pools in the U.S. Reducing the Deadly Risks of Storage. We'll link to that at democracynow.org.